Today, I'm going to be talking about making psi bases, starting off with making your own phase distorted saw waves. Then I'm going to be moving on to actually how you would make a patch using that waveform. And so with no further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to mute this kick because we'll be starting out with making the waveform. Place a nice low note because the lower notes have longer wave cycles and therefore have more samples in that waveform and end up with higher resolution waveforms. Then we've just got this saw wave and then we can get a oscilloscope to visualize what's happening. This is a free oscilloscope from Bomshanka Music. I'm going to bring the random phase to zero so we've got a consistent starting point. The first method that I'm going to show you is altering the phase using frequency splitters. Adding a frequency splitter will introduce a bit of phase shift into the signal and then moving these points will change the characteristics of this saw wave by having the crossovers be at different points in the spectrum. And if I go to add another frequency splitter, it won't let me. You can only have one on here. But I found a workaround where if I send this saw wave to bus one and then send bus one to bus two, I can then have a frequency splitter on each of these, which allows me to add up to three. For this example, I'm just going to stick with two. That'll probably be enough because if you disperse the phases too much, then you can actually end up losing power in your saw wave. So two should be just enough. And as you can see, at some points, the peak level of the waveform is actually lower, which means you're actually gaining headroom, which is very useful for making your bass lines louder. Somewhere there will do for now. And then I'm going to go into the menu and go resample to oscillator A. Then we've got ourselves a phase distorted saw right here. And then if I go ahead and turn off these splitters now and take that out of the buses. And then for a second method, we can just use the diffuser filter, which is one of the new Serum 2 filters. And we can use the resonance control as well as the stages to alter the phases of this saw wave. So once again, I'm going to bring the random phase down and I'm going to send oscillator B through this filter. Once again, we've got just our saw wave and then put on the diffuser. We've got a lot of phase distortion there and the higher up you go, you end up with more and more phase distortion. But if you go too high, then you're also going to be losing a lot of power in your waveform. So you only really want to use a tiny little bit of it. Somewhere there is pretty tasty. Resample that. Now, if I turn this diffuser filter off, go into our waveform and remove the sub, then we've got our waveform there. And if I put the phase to the beginning and then add in the sub, play with the phase of the sub to change the way that it interacts with the overtones. Somewhere there is pretty nice. And from here, let's make a baseline. So I'm going to just duplicate this waveform. So we've got two here. I'll start with the first one and add a nice volume envelope. Retrig on a rate of 1 over 16 and set it to mono, which means that if a new note triggers, it will cut off the previous note and have a nice clean transient. If I set the release time to point five and the attack time to point one that'll give us a nice clean start and stop as well brilliant and now before i go any further i'm going to just set up some appropriate midi notes so let's just go on a nice low f 
and just set up a nice rolling bass line. So we've got some 16ths going and I'm going to set up our main volume envelope and set the auxiliary source to velocity. And I'll set up our velocities now where the first one is a bit lower. We've got a nice strong offbeat and then this last one can just be a little bit lower. So we've got more of an up and down feel rather than just a machine gun effect. Duplicate this out a few times. So we've got our rolling bass. I'm going to assign a little bit of velocity onto our sub. Make a, another 16th envelope and that's going to be for our sub. This is going to be a slightly delayed shape which gives us more of that phase dispersed character. From here we just need a filter. So let's go ahead and get a low pass. Turn the resonance down. I will set up a shape like this to start off with. Go on 16th notes once again on retrig and let's set this up. Put oscillator A through the filter. Then add one final thing before we hear it with the kick and that is going to be to make a little side chain type thing. So I'll leave this on a quarter, set this to free so it's always going to be on the quarter and won't be re-triggering with each of our 16th notes. That will go onto the sub level as the AUX source. So let's go AUX source LFOs LFO4. So now we have no sub for the first 16th, which will be hitting around here and therefore make sure that there's no interaction between the kick and bass. Let's hear this with the kick now. I'm gonna go and check the relationship between the kick and bass with the oscilloscope. Good, the kick seems pretty intact. Now what I'll do is go ahead and fine tune some of these shapes because the shapes of our volumes and of our filter is really what's going to make or break the rolling bass. If I have it too open on our main oscillator, there will be less definition between each of the bass notes. If I have it less, then there'll be a much more distinguished gap between the different notes. So you want to make sure it's got enough of a dip that you feel the individual bass plucks, but not so much that it feels staggered. And the filter shape matters a lot but I found the thing that affects the character the most is the range as well as the position of the cutoff. Just check out the difference in character. And where you set all this up is very dependent on what you're going for. I personally really like to have it where you don't hear as much of the saw overtones. I like it when you have an overall quite deep sound. And if I set up a little bit of velocity on this cutoff, not by much, because if it's too much, then it's just going to be ridiculous. But if you only have like, let's say 4%, you'll have a bit more of an up and down feel. So just playing with the velocity here, you can get very different grooves. If this was up higher, you have a more sustained feel. But if you've got this first note a lot lower, then you get more of this almost sidechain type effect. Which is very satisfying and definitely adds a lot more groove to the bass line.
if you want a bit more transient out of your baseline, you can go ahead and add a very small 16th envelope that has a little increase on the filter. And then you can just have a bit more openness at the very start of the bass. That sounds great. And now I'll add this second waveform, which is a clone of the first one. I'll attach that to the volume envelope. I'll go into the matrix and have the auxiliary source be once again the velocity because I want it to have the same fluctuation. Then I'm going to go into the waveform and I'm just going to remove the very lowest frequencies. And that is going to go into the filter as well. And then what I'll do is I'll make a nice custom shape for the panning of this oscillator. And I'll just hold Alt, drag that in there. This is going to have no level whatsoever. And I'm going to just set the phase randomization down to zero. And then the panning of this stereo layer is going to be oscillator C. And then I can affect how much it's being panned with the slider here. That'll probably do. Without it. With it. Ooh, just adds a lot of nice information and yeah, it's just fantastic. And then we can play with the volume because we don't necessarily need it to be as loud as our first oscillator. Somewhere around there will do nicely. And then if I go back to my filter shape. So as you can see, it's a lot of fine tuning, really, but it's really all to do with the subtlety. Now, a couple of final things, one being a bit of equalization. If I also set this to 16th, I'll go into the effects, EQ, and then set up some little notches and just fine tune which areas of the spectrum I don't need as much of. Bring down this other one. I'll attach a little modulation onto the gain of both of these. Then I can use this shape to determine how much or how little of that frequency register is being attenuated. So I can just clean up the tail there. Very nice. Final step that I like to do to make sure everything is nice and tidy is add a little utility and just pop a bit of a fade out on the very end. And that can go on the gain here. I'll bring that down, hold Alt, Shift and click, and then that'll make it unipolar. Bring that to about halfway because that's the usual and set that to a 16th also so we've got a nice clean shut off at the very end of our bass notes. And so for now I'm going to leave you with that and if you want to support the channel 
you know how to do that. And I'll see you on the next video.